The outpouring of support following the recent Boston Marathon bombings and the West explosion has been really overwhelming. People from all across the country trying to give. So if you are thinking about donating to one of the many charities that will benefit victims of these tragedies, we have some good financial information for you. The IRS is warning potential donors to beware of charity scams operating in the wake of the attack and the explosion in Central Texas. So here with more on how to wisely make a donation, we are joined by CPA Alan Sanderson. Alan, thank you for coming in. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. And talk first about, you said we talked about in the commercial break, recognize, react, and report. Recognize. What does that mean? Well, what you want to look for are certain telling signs or red flags uh, that a charity or a charitable push may not necessarily be legitimate, okay? One of them is the name game. You have charities that will set up names that are very similar to a standard um, charity, but it might say organization instead of association or whatever the case may be. And so you got to watch for those things. A lot of those will be freshly set up charities right after an event is uh, done in order to channel things in. They had about 120 brand new um, URL set up for the domain registrars within a few hours of the Boston Marathon bombing. For some of them are well-meaning, but some of them maybe not so much. It's an overwhelming number when you're trying to consider who to give to. Right. And you may want to give to one more than another if you plan to deduct from your taxes. Right, right, and exactly right. And you got to watch out for that. Uh, that's a part of recognition. You can go to the uh, uh, Charity Navigator, for example, and see if they're good stewards of the fund. You can go to the IRS.gov site to make sure that they are, in fact, a 501c3, a, a real charity. You can go to 501 exempt to find out if they have had their charity status yanked uh, or something along the line. So do a little bit of homework. As a people, we tend to be impatient. We Im act impulsively, but we're also very charitable. And that's a perfect set of circumstances in a disaster to have your money taken and put away to something that doesn't necessarily help the folks that are, that are in need of it. What about safeguarding our personal information when we give? That's another one of the scams. Remember that all these things come together to make a perfect environment in social media and email. Why? You have a false sense of community in a social media site. You may have a false uh, sense of uh, uh, legitimacy. And also you have a disaster, so there's an impulse you want to help now. And all of a sudden, your money's going someplace that it shouldn't have gone. Or, in the case of an email that comes through, and it has nothing to do with taking your money for the charity, but getting your information to do some information theft and thereby drain your credit card accounts or your bank accounts. Alan, what should you do if you suspect fraud? Right. And that comes back to the part about reacting. Terminate the phone call. If they call back, terminate it again. That's a sure sign that someone's a scammer. They keep calling back and saying, oh, you got to help now. Uh, do that. Uh, discontinue any email traffic back and forth or any messaging back and forth or any social media interaction back and forth. Delete the emails uh, completely because the chances are that link could be something that downloads malware onto your computer mm. or uh, does something else that will allow them to get your personal information. So terminate the contact immediately. All right, good information to think about when we give, Alan. Thank right. you so much for coming in today. You bet. And to watch this again and get a little bit more information, maybe you want to take notes the next time around, head to our website, abc13.com. We're going to post this clip a little bit later today.